Okay, this lecture is Roger's theory of dementia. So this is my theory of what I think causes dementia and what you can do to help prevent it. And the reason I'm making this video about a theory of dementia is because the traditional textbooks, the traditional research and journals on dementia, it stinks, okay? It's ridiculous. I look at brains all the time and what you see in traditional uh, conventional thought. And here's the big textbooks, you can just see them. Look how thick these textbooks are, 1,700 pages and they stink, they're worthless. And these are neurology textbooks, these are pathology textbooks, and I put a lot of things on, but I'm just getting an idea. These books like contain virtually no useful information. What really matters is what causes dementia, so once you know the cause, you can avoid it. And we talked about this before. I'll show you the best book ever written on dementia was um, Alzheimer Turning Point uh, by Jack Della Torre about the mouse equivalents. The best book ever written on atherosclerosis is this one by Gregory Sloop. Goes through blood viscosity, hemorrheology. Um, so that's one key part of the puzzle. And so what I notice is the brains are just shrinking. It's due to atrophy. Atrophy is due to apoptosis, meaning programmed cell death, whereby it happens gradually, so you can't see anything on an MRI. And so I, I made the mnemonic for how I structure my theory of what causes dementia as both. Because, yes, I'm bragging that one smart person who just reads what's out there can outcompete any big institution, any big foundation. You could give them a hundred billion dollars and they're a joke because all they're trying to do is generate money to sell drugs, okay? If, if the goal is to sell drugs to make a profit, they'll never figure out the truth about anything. And so I just tell you that because what happens to a typical demented person? They get labeled Alzheimer's, they take this pill, but the pill doesn't work, so what? Just take it, maybe it'll help. I mean, it's stupid. Okay, so there is actually a lot known about what causes dementia and there's a lot you could do. Just avoid the things that cause it. So here they are. Number one, oxygen and glucose deprivation. So what deprives the brain of oxygen and glucose? Well, we know high dietary fat does. I got lectures on that. Rouleau formation. The reason I like Sloop so much, he's the one who figured out a lot of uh, Rouleau formation due to elevated LDL cholesterol. I think the video by Dr. McDougall and Roy Swank is really nice when they're looking in the cheek pouches and that work's all been repeated. Um, blood sludge, so to speak. It's sometimes called Rouleau formation of the red blood cells sticking together, so it's harder to push them through the capillaries. RBC is about seven microns, capillaries about five microns, so pressure has to go up when um, the RBCs are thickened by the dietary fat. Okay, what else decreases uh, blood supply to the brain? If you have vasoconstrictors, things that tighten up the arteries, you know, the artery clamps down like that. That's sodium is the big one. Walter Kempner's proved the benefits of lowering sodium with hypertension. Richard Moore, this is the best book ever written on hypertension, called The High Blood Pressure Solution. High Blood Pressure Solution, it's a masterpiece of a book, and it explains all the sodium ion pumps and a lot of other concepts with regard to ion pumps for sodium and potassium. And basically, that's why you want to eat plant foods. Plants got potassium, it's a vasodilator. Processed food has tons of sodium in it, it's a vasoconstrictor. And the same thing, you know, that's vasoconstricting the arteries to the brain, it also inhibits endothelial nitric oxide and causes a problem with every single cell in your body, but especially your brain cells. Your brain cells use two-thirds of their energy uh, for those potassium sodium ATPase pumps in the plasma membrane. And if you distort the ratios of uh, potassium to sodium in a large way, you're distorting the function of every neuron in your brain. You're making yourself, you're decreasing your cognitive potential. Okay, so you eat the plants, you get the good stuff, the vasodilators, potassium, and uh, magnesium. Uh, the mouse equivalents, we talked about that in a previous lecture, and I'm going to go into all these details. Whatever I haven't covered already, I'll later on make a more detailed summary of it. This was just to put it all together in one quick way. I thought this mnemonic was kind of fun. All right, so we talked about the mouse equivalents, meaning things that are equivalent of having a cervical carotid artery tied off. Carotid artery stenosis, congestive heart failure, atrial fibrillation, aortic regurg, aortic stenosis, obstructive sleep apnea, dropping oxygen to the brain at night, and overtreatment of hypertension, causing chronic cerebral hypotension. So these all deprive brain cells of the glucose and the oxygen they need in order to stay healthy. And then getting antioxidants. You get antioxidants from plants. Plants need to produce antioxidants because they're out in the sun on a hot day, 100 degrees. All they can use is chemicals to avoid the sun. An animal can go walk in the shade. A plant can't do that. We eat the plant, we get the antioxidants. You don't get them from eating meat because the animals used them up. Okay, stimulants. This is another big problem with uh, brain damage. When you, when you have a normal brain, the ratio of blood supply is equal to the metabolic activity of the neuron, and that keeps the neuron healthy. 
when you increase metabolic demand of the neuron because you're taking stimulants like caffeine, MSG, MFG, manufactured free glutamate, aspartame, nicotine, you're stressed out, sleep deprived, you have to raise the blood supply in order to meet that energy demand. Russell Blaylock wrote a book and you know his father had died of Parkinson's and he was upset about it. He's a neurosurgeon. He's a bright guy. So I like Blaylock's book called Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills. That's a good book on excitotoxins. There's an audio CD version of it. But I do not like the way he recommends all these supplements. I do not agree with him at all. I think he's very excessive about that. But is he a smart guy? Yeah. And he was very interested in the subject because of his father dying. So he did a good job of researching that subject. It's a relatively obscure subject. But then you can sort of launch from his book into other things. And it's an important concept, the concept of excitotoxicity. And that's the point. I Like here's a neurology textbook, 1,700-page book on neurology. How much do you think is about excitotoxicity? About one paragraph. What a joke. That's the most important thing you can know about cognitive uh, impairment is excitotoxicity, mechanisms of acute neuronal injury. Um, and so just so you know, that's why... This is not common knowledge, the things I'm telling you. Show this to any doctor. Show it to a doctor from an Ivy League school. They'll go, wow, that's right. That's clever. That's not the usual BS they hear every day. Okay. Um, let's see. Next thing is toxins. So in terms of also matching blood supply and oxygen and glucose delivery with metabolic demand, and then the stimulants ramping up, stimulants ramping up metabolic demand, you got to ramp up blood supply. There's also the problem of energy production being inhibited by things that damage the main pathways like glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and mitochondrial electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation to make ATP. So I gave a previous lecture on the production of toxic aldehydes from these omega-6 cooking oils. Tetsumori Yamashima was a Japanese neuroscientist who figured out a lot of that. Plenty of other work's been done on oils and just how toxic they are as a processed food. All of them are bad. Um, Let's see, what else? I, I gave, talked about that in atherosclerosis lectures, oil lectures. Uh, sat fat, not only does it, is it atherogenic, it increases insulin resistance. Insulin then messes up metabolism of every cell in your body, including a lot of your brain cells have glucose type 4 transporters, so they are also affected significantly by insulin resistance. Diabetes makes people stupid, okay? It's very common. Uh, type 2 diabetics are cognitively impaired. They don't understand what's going on with themselves. The vast majority of them never get better. There's sort of like this fantasy idea amongst people that don't have much experience with medicine that all these patients, you know, go in modern medicine, treat some cures. No, it puts them on a pill forever and they progressively deteriorate. Pills can slow things down a little bit, but the only hope of cure in a type 2 diabetic is fix the diet, exercise, that sort of thing. Um, who else? Michael Brownlee wrote the best paper ever on uh, diabetes. I've talked about that before. I have lectures on that. Gerald Shellman as well did the great work. They're the two best researchers in the world on diabetes in the modern world. Okay, um, and then other toxins. I've given separate lectures on these. Lead, cadmium, HG, aluminum, arsenic, F minus, GP, etc. And these are some of the authors who wrote uh, great books on these subjects. Stephanie Seneff, Jane Hightower wrote the Mercury book. Chris Axley wrote the aluminum book. Dean Murphy wrote uh, F minus book. Stephanie Seneff wrote the GP book. So I just mentioned that. So if you got these things knocking down your energy production, then you're going to have to ramp up blood supply more in order to get them to meet. So that you're, because when a neuron is deprived of adequate oxygen and glucose, it starts to, it starts to gradually die if it can't maintain its needs. So you don't want to raise its metabolic demand unnecessarily. Giving it more antioxidants like vitamins A, C, and E that come from your plant foods, they help it to control the amount of uh, oxidative stress, reactive oxygen. I'm going to talk about all these things in more detail, but what I'm telling you is this mechanism here, give yourself good blood flow. Don't unnecessarily ramp up your metabolic demand of your brain cells by taking stimulants and avoid toxins as much as you can. That'll give you as healthy a brain as you can have. And not this nonsense about Alzheimer's. And I'll talk about that more in more lectures. But there's a lot you can do. And there's lots of people who are very smart, who take good care of themselves, and they keep their brains their entire long lives. And you could do it too.